Okay, so apparently Twitch Korea is shutting down. Good evening, and thank you for being here. Um, for those who don't me, know me, I'm Dan Clancy. I'm the CEO of Twitch. Um, so um, I think many of you know we made an announcement today about Korea. I went on the stream earlier in Korean um, where we um, had translators. This is a stream designed for um, the English-speaking audience. Um, if any of the Korean audience was not able to make it, um, we're not doing the translation in this stream. Um, so let me first of all Dude, take I'm a moment be, I'm to explain surprised why we're doing here. This. Um, I wanted to go ahead and explain the announcement that we made this morning. I suspect most of you that are here have read the announcement, um, and most importantly, explain why we made the uh, the announcement and also some of the details about the announcement. Um, to be clear, this was a very difficult decision. It's something that we have put off for some time. Uh, we've looked at a variety of other options. Um, it is a very difficult decision because of the Korean streamers that currently use Twitch to build their communities and the value that they offer. And uh, many of them support themselves through Twitch and then even more of them uh, find community through Twitch. I know, Joe. So it's a very difficult decision and I'll try and explain why we made it. Um, we will be trying to answer some questions in chat. Um, we have a team that's looking at to try and pop some out. I'm keeping an eye on chat as well. I may see something. Uh, obviously, we won't be able to answer all of them. I've also picked out some questions that we think are the most common questions that I will answer um, right off at the beginning. Um, so first of all, in terms of getting to the announcement, um, as we mentioned in the blog, we announced today that um, we have decided to shut down the Twitch business in Korea as of February 27th of next year. So I realize this is very disappointing news for the Korean creators and the Korean audience. Um, as Twitch is an important part of their lives. Many of them have invested a great deal of time creating active communities on Twitch. Um, and so this is obviously very um, disappointing. I don't want to talk about why we're doing, but also what we can do to help support you in this transition. So ultimately the reason for doing this is because the cost to operate Twitch in Korea is prohibitively expensive. We spent a significant effort um, working to reduce these costs. The costs that dominate are the network usage fees. Um, Korea operates differently than um, the other markets that we operate in, in terms of the relationship we need to have with the network providers and what we need to pay for them to deliver the bits that we are serving to the end users. Um, the end result is that um, it's over 10 times more expensive to operate in Korea in terms of the network usage fees. As I said, we, we've been looking for ways to solve this problem. Uh, first, we looked at a peer-to-peer -peer model of weird internet laws for as far as serving I know. the fees, um, and we did an experiment on this. This reduced um, some of the cost, but not nearly enough, and we were still at over 10 times the, um, uh, the cost of other countries, and it was still at a point where it could not break even. Uh, we also adjusted source quality to 720p, and while this made improvements, the improvements weren't enough. And the fundamental problem um, in Korea is because of the cost of delivering the bits, as Twitch grows, we actually lose more money in Korea. When we say it's not profitable, we don't mean taking into account any of our fixed cost of running the business in terms of me or engineers or anything else. We're just talking about the variable cost of running the service in Korea. Um, and it creates a problem uh, when, as you get increased usage, which is obviously what all of our creators want, is they want us to invest in getting more viewers to enjoy Twitch, that in fact, you lose more money as more people watch and enjoy Twitch. Um, we've been operating in this way for quite some time. Um, about three years ago, that's when we started looking at how can we do this in a manner that is sustainable over time and responsible. And that's why we've been working and doing so many um, experiments to see if there was a pathway forward. And we finally had to make the decision that we did not see that pathway. So let me go into some of the details. So on the 27th, the viewers in Korea will no longer be able to purchase Twitch products and streamers will not be able to monetize through the Twitch products. So both sides of it. 
Um, and so you won't be able to subscribe or give gift subs or use bits. Up until that date, Twitch will operate as it does today. Um, the final payout to the Korean creators will be on March 16th. Um, and, uh, uh, and then there'll be, you know, ongoing things from there. Um, so we are still determining exactly what will happen after this date um, in terms of accessing Twitch. Um, again, we are, we are terminating operations. It is likely that we will need to um, block streaming from Korean IPs. Um, but what we need to do will be determined um, in a manner where we ensure that we comply with Korean regulations. Dude, it's, they, um, dude they, have, they have uh, weird internet laws and, and stuff there, man. The reasons why we cannot determine exactly what we will need to do after this um, uh, point. Um, however, we understand that a huge value for Twitch is the ability to support your life. And um, February 27th is when the monetization abilities will be turned off. Um, the... Um, so the the next thing i want to talk about is what we can do to help streamers transition their communities um we know that these streamers have built their communities and it's very important for us to help them transition them uh, there are two alternative services in korea africa tv and q2 um, and so we want to do all that we can to help them move their communities we've reached out to both of these That's services good. to um, try and get them to um, see what they want to do africa tv helping these creators. The first part is um, creators being able to maintain their status so that if you're a partner on Twitch and you can monetize, we'd like to make it so that you can monetize right away on these other platforms. Um, and same thing with affiliates, ideally. Um, and then also seeing what else we can do to make it easier for moving the communities. Um, on our end, um, to be clear um, uh, with this announcement, any of the limitations on simulcasting do not apply to Korean streamers. We fully realize you will be promoting other services um, and uh, and want to figure out how we can help you do that. Um, ultimately, you'll need to pick where you think you want to move your your um, uh, your community. Um, I expect initially you'll simulcast and then eventually you might even have some static notification on your stream so that people know where you ended up and what your channel is. Damn, that stream. would be crazy if they did that. Um, if Twitch Again, straight up was like the Korean streamers, hey, this streamer was, is now uh, on this website, go there. it affects Korean viewers. That would be insane. Um, the thing that made a particularly different is all of the streamers that are building communities in Korea um, and the impact that this will have on them. And that's one reason why it has taken us so long to do this. He said, he and, said maybe they um, can do that. Why we've explored many other options. So now let me go through... Um, some of the other questions that um, I think will be common in here. Why are the economics of Korea so different from other markets? Um, and now I'm not an expert in all the details of the um, different agreements with network usage fees for other providers, but for us, um, we need to pay the, um, the network uh, providers fees based on the amount of data that they have to deliver to the end users. And as I said, that is significantly more than the cost of streaming um, in other countries as yeah, they, by a factor they, of 10. Hmm. Um, another question, why are we making the decision now? Um, again, this is something we've been considering for quite some time. And we've uh, done experiments and looked at many other options. And ultimately, we felt like we needed to um, uh, be upfront about what we we're doing. And I'll talk some of the other options we consider in a second. Um, do you have plans to re-enter the Korean market in the future, or is this a permanent decision? So obviously, I don't know what may happen in the future. Um, uh, obviously, we're not planning to do that anytime in the near term, um, and would only do it if we felt like that was a viable um, uh, way to to run the business. And to be clear on this, this has nothing to do with profits. It's about making sure that we are not losing money in Korea, because and, and right now we've been losing a fair amount of money from Korea. And of course, the only way to come up with that is from revenue from the rest of the world. And we felt like that was not the right long-term solution in this situation. Um, yeah, so let me go to some of the other um, uh, questions. So what other options did you consider and why didn't you choose one of them? So one option we considered was streaming at 480p. Uh, when we looked at that, that still did not get us to where we'd need to be. 
In addition, it's unclear if that complies with Korean regulations in terms of the service that you need to provide in Korea. Um, and so it's not clear that would even have been a viable alternative in Korea. Um, we looked at serving from outside of Korea. In fact, this is the solution that a number of other um, uh, internet services have, provide, have, have pursued because this is not a problem that is unique to Twitch. Uh, most recently, Netflix began serving from outside of Korea. Meta has done this and other services. Um, the reason we didn't choose this, and just so you understand how this works, what it would mean is we would give the bits to an um, internet service provider, let's say in Germany or Japan, and then they would be responsible for delivering it to the Korean ISP. Now in this, it's unclear if they would realize a different expense, additional expenses in this, which then of course would translate to us. Um, more importantly, we, we did not believe that our service in many cases would really be viable. Um, for some users, we felt Twitch would not be a watchable experience. We spend a great deal of time making sure that the interactive live video um, uh, works well, you don't have buffering, and latency, of course, is a big factor for interactive live video as you have community and chat. Um, and we felt that for many users, it would end up being not really a watchable experience. And if we went down this pathway. Oh, and one other factor, it, it's unclear if this is actually allowed. In fact, in the other cases when this has occurred, um, legal action has been taken against the companies for serving from outside of Korea for the cost of the network usage fees. Um, at least most recently in the Netflix case. This I was, was going to say there was a, there was a lawsuit with Netflix the terms of a while settlement. back. Um, but they reached some agreement that worked for both parties um, that um, uh, so it's not clear we would have been allowed to continue to do this, but we felt like this would be giving false hope to our creators. And in fact, many of them would try and stay around to make it work. But in fact, their viewership would drop precipitously. And we felt like in the end, you'd be hurting them more. It would be worse for them. It would, yeah, that would be, that would be worse for them. Home because long -term. we did not think that long-term the service could have been viable yeah. stream serving from outside of Korea. That sucks. Um, we also looked at charging users or streamers um, differently than in the rest of um, the world and eventually decided that it was not clear again that it would have been really a viable service if we had chosen that option compared to other alternatives. Um, so what will happen in Korea after the shutdown date? So um, I know this will be a big question. And at this point, we're not completely sure. Um, this depends in part on Korean regulations in terms of what uh, we're allowed to do and how we're allowed to operate. Um, it is reasonable that we will probably need to um, block streaming from Korean IPs. Um, and what happens on the viewer side <coughs> depends again in part on Korean regulations and what we're allowed to do. Um, it's driven more by that than the cost because the cost would be manageable um, uh, given the size that we would be dealing with there. Um, uh, one of the questions would also be, what if I'm an IRL streamer visiting Korea? Um, so we understand that that is um, uh, a use case. Lots of people travel to Korea. We want people to travel to Korea. Um, if you do use a third-party cloud OBS, um, and I won't mention the one that I use, um, I don't want to promote that one over the other cloud OBS services, but um, uh, those would still be able to operate since you'd be streaming from the cloud OBS to Twitch. And then um, locally, you'd be streaming up to the cloud OBS. And similarly, many of the third party um, services that support. Oh, um, but that doesn't that doesn't fix. Traveling. So I think that that doesn't fix the financial to work um, uh, after because it's after about the conversions day. and stuff like that. Um, all right, um, that highlights a few of the first questions. Now I'm gonna go to some of the questions we've pulled out from the chat. Um, I'm keeping an eye on chat, but of course it is um, quite busy. So. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're, so so it sounds like if you're incorporated Ortega, in, in America or something like that, that then you'd be okay. Won't make money. I feel very bad, Patrick. Um, that is exactly at the, the what root. Kind of, what kind um, of question is do however, you feel bad? I, like, I will obviously. say that there are um, uh, two alternatives. They're different. They're not the same as Twitch. And so I don't want to act like there isn't a meaningful impact, as I've said in other places. I think Twitch is unique. Um, uh, one reason hey, we're doing this up, and we are providing the time. I know this sucks. And our assistance is 
we felt like that the other alternatives would have been slowly um, uh, diminishing Korea and slowly draining Korea. And in fact, the creators would have been making less money and it would have meaningfully impacted, but we never would have come clean and told them about where we're going and where, what the challenges were in operating in Korea. And we felt like in the end, this would be better um, in the long run for those creators. But of course, there's no easy answer here. Um, it's a difficult decision. Um, can star, will Twitch consider restarting its business in Korea when the laws related to network access usage fees is adjusted to be in line with other countries? Um, not ruling out anything in the future. Um, right now, we're only making decisions based upon what information we have right now. Um, and so we obviously, if, the, if things change, we'd obviously reconsider these decisions. Can viewers still watch in Korea? Um, again, I think question. this is one of the questions that we will need to determine what is allowed. Um, uh, we would probably serve from outside of Korea. Um, some of the problems we would get in that with the amount of traffic we have right now in Korea would not be as acute because it would not be nearly as much traffic. Um, but we are not certain what we will need to do at that point in time. Um, and it's going to be important that we adhere to the regulations in Korea. Uh, but it won't be a cost um, a factor because I think, again, the amount of traffic we will see will be precipitously less. It would just be people traveling from Korea or people in Korea um, watching people outside of Korea. Uh, from Rudy VTuber, I'm a Korean streamer and I have one question. At the previous stream, you mentioned about supporting streamers to transfer onto another platform. Can you, can you tell me if you have any specific plans? Also, does that mean we Korean streamers do not get banned for multi-platform streaming anymore? Um, yeah, so first of all, in the second part, to be clear, we had already changed our policies around multi-platform streaming. Um, there are some limitations that we state with multi-platform streaming. None of those limitations apply to the Korean streamers affected by this decision. Um, uh, in particular, you, there is no issue with you promoting people to go to other services. Um, in terms of specific plans, this in part depends upon the other platforms. Um, the first thing we're focused on is trying to make sure that monetizing creators can maintain some form of That's status good. when they transition. But um, this depends upon our conversations. We've reached out to them and we will be updating you as we get feedback from them of, of what um, they're going to do to try and support um, uh, support all of you in this transition. Um, the other thing that we will certainly do is be sharing information about what different streamers are doing and what is working well. Um, I know as I think about it, I think um, you would probably start by simulcasting and then eventually you'd probably only stream on the other service, but you might put a static um, screen up while you're streaming that says, come check me out over there. Um, can subscribe and I'll say to all of the users that support Korean streamers um, uh, Please at this time continue to support them until they can be fully transitioned to the other service um, It's important to help them in this difficult time um, You notice this since three years. Why only three months to streamers? This is not fair So play per man. Um, dude if they send out your notification when you go live on another website, uh, that would actually be insane um That'd be sick if they did that. That'd be, I think that would be it's a, a good, what is the right a really, really time. cool thing for them to um, do. Uh, we chose this because we do think delaying it actually um, isn't the right um, solution for the streamer. Meaning if we said this will be six months, um, then it's easy for people to say, oh, well, I don't have to worry about it now. Why should they? They don't, they don't the need to do that. The reality is viewers will start they, moving they'd, right They'd be away. doing that out of courtesy so to their fact, um, Korean It is streamers. much easier for everyone if we have a deadline in the reasonable future so that way viewers start adjusting their patterns and streamers start adjusting their patterns because if a few streamers leave but other streamers don't then viewers are stuck between two services and in the end as painful as this is i think it's better to um, um you know make the transition happen if along the way we see we were wrong in the period we'll we'll consider that um and we'll see how this progresses. Uh, why aren't Twitch's competitors experiencing this high service cost? Um, so I don't know the details of their operations, um, uh, but we do know that many other people do experience these high service costs. As I said, um, uh, Netflix recently stopped um, serving in uh, um, 
started streaming from outside of Korea. Meta has also run into problems due to this. Um, now, each of their businesses are different. Netflix's business is very different than us uh, in terms of their underlying cost structure of their business. <coughs> YouTube is a VOD business predominantly. And again, the cost structures of VOD is very different. Um, the idea of delivering from outside is a little more uh, feasible. Um, Africa operates very differently than us. They're a local company. We do not know what their costs are and if they're the same as ours as a local company. Uh, but their cost structure, they one way to think of it is... And um, I don't think uh, most people are upset they, at Twitch. I think most uh, people are upset uh, about the South Korean laws. They built their company around and the economics of their company around Korean and how this cost structure runs, whereas we have not built all of our, the way our, our, our service operates around this. Um, let's see. How will this affect viewing experience um, uh, on Korean viewers? Specifically, will we be able to watch in 1080p? Um, so again, there are no changes until 227. And then, as I said, we're working through the particulars after 227, depending February. on- Wait, end of February? Is that, is that 227? Of what would be allowed. Um, I think it means 227 from as in next, you not make it like three months from now, countries. February 27th. Um, uh, we've talked a lot about our obligation to run Twitch as a sustainable business and where we're at right now. Um, and right now, um, uh, and in fact, we did look at seeing if the um, uh, loss was small enough, if we could just absorb it. But it is a significant delta in terms of the cost versus of, of running the business. And we have, and and the problem is, as Korea grows, which it has grown, then that cost keeps increasing. And of course, our streamers want us to invest in Korea growing because they want their communities to grow, because um, that is good for them. They want more streamers to start streaming on Twitch, and so um, we want to be a, we we would be at odds with them if we were trying not to have the service grow. From Jimbo Max, um, thank you for the stream. I have a question. What implications would there be for partnered streamers in Korea upon implementing of this change? Would they be prevented from streaming on Twitch altogether? Um, so um, uh, if you're a partnered streamer in Korea, uh, first of all, one of the things that's important is where your country of residence is, um, which is something you fill out when you become um, uh, affiliate or partner. Um, I know some Korean streamers travel outside of Korea um, and uh, how we will handle this in terms of monetization. It is about when you're identified um, with Korea as your country of residence. Um, if, if, that, if Korea is not your country of residence, but you're in Korea some, but you travel outside, then when you're outside of Korea, you'd still be able to stream. Um, but if you're inside of Korea at some point after the February 27th date, we would need to be taking actions to um, uh, uh, to prohibit you from being able to stream. And again, what we need to do will be determined based upon the Korean regulations. Um, are there no sponsors that can manage Twitch system in Korea and pay for it to Twitch? Um, it's a good question. I think the simple answer is no, in terms of if there's a third party that would cover this delta. Um, I don't think there is um, in terms of that, which is unfortunate. Um, Mokasan, is this the start of the downfall of Twitch? Mokasan, <laughs> no, um, not at all. This is a unique thing. Dude, people ask so many stupid questions. Korean market, as I said, um, uh, other I, dude, businesses have had a similar problem operating in Korea, and it is because of the network usage fees that is unique uh, to Korea. People are so um, dumb. Let's see. Are there other regions in danger? No, um, uh, as I've shared, this is unique to Korea um, and this is not something that will um, uh, affect, affect other regions. Um, so can't, so let's see. So they can't just change their onboarding location. No, that would not be um, sufficient. You can and still monetize, but that doesn't mean you'll be able to stream from Korea if you change your country of residence, you still maintain your account and your status. Um, uh, but um, when you're in Korea, we will need to take actions to make sure you're not streaming from Korea. Let's see. Let's, dude, um, th this, this whole thing sucks, from man. From Killabean. 
Surely like your network I, usage. I, I, wish I, I wish I had a better understanding. Should have had a very decent leverage that the loss of your network usage would hurt their free income. Was this not attempted with the government bodies responsible? I, I feel um, like yes, we actually, we tried all avenues with this. One of the challenges is this is a um, challenge that many companies face. Um, while for the Twitch community, we are um, uh, very um, passionate about Twitch. Um, in the broader scheme of things, there are many other players um, uh, in this market, and in fact, we don't have the leverage um, that uh, you would think we might in terms of getting a sustainable rate, but we've been working hard to make it um, sustainable. Um, from Prime Gaming, um, Army Dune, can you reveal how much you pay for Korean telecommunications company? Um, I can't talk about the specifics. I don't know the details of each of the contracts. Um, uh, I will repeat the um, Delta is even with the reductions that we have made, like with peer to peer in 720p, it's still 10 times higher than in other um, uh, other countries where we operate. So um, can you please put your answers to this in a central place so you can see them later? So first of all, we'll make this available in Avad. Um, we do have some of these um, uh, in our fact to our blog post. And in fact, we'll continue updating things um, uh, as we go along, especially in terms of how we can help our streamers transition. Yeah, and going to, so basically starting in March, uh, South Korean located streams won't be able to stream. Um, yes, in terms of IP, that is the likely outcome in terms of specifically how that will be implemented. Again, it depends upon uh, uh, what we need to do in terms of the regulations in the country. Yeah, I mean, dude, this this whole thing sucks. I wish I had a better understanding of like how like the net neutrality laws and stuff work. Uh, I, I, I do know that the laws in Korea are... relationship with XQC in any way. I wouldn't think so, Dance and Q. <laughs> so People ask the dumbest questions. Um, okay. I see another question that I think we answered. I swear, um, in dude. Terms of random, can you consider streaming under 480p? Um, there's certain regulations in Korea about um, um, what you can do to your service. It, it was unclear if even, in fact, uh, we generally felt that transitioning to 480p probably would have been prohibited, although we did not. A person, but it was it was it was it was not clear that that would have been allowed, um, giving regulations in Korea. Will this affect events like League of Legends, LCS, or will Twitch be? Able this is to a make good question. I, I don't think they'll Korea? be able to do I like world and stuff. There. I think this is what I'm highlighting in terms of what we're allowed to do, um, uh, in terms of the regulations yeah. come come in the country, how that will work, and then there are other solutions. They could use maybe they thought it might happen people. cami because the, so the I think that's one netflix that deal just happened a few months back out. um uh and we'll be working on this and communicating with some of the uh, developers there to see what what works hello i'm a viewer watching from korea the problem with korean services is largely the cost of telecommunication companies wouldn't it be possible to solve some of the damage by seeking help from streamers for a certain percentage of that portion? Yeah, that is one of the um, options that we considered was, um, could we charge streamers to use the service? Um, and we could have charged all streamers to use the service. Um, and that's something that we, we you know, considered, looked at. Um, we didn't feel like in the end that that would end up being a, a viable alternative in terms yeah. of the number of people that would have been uh, willing to. Um, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really fix up any of the problems. The like the cost of delivering the bits. Like um, in, a, in a perfect world, like it would just, are, it would offset um, it kind of, but are, it just doesn't. You know, it doesn't actually do anything. Are still most of them are just um, um, making enough to pay their bills um, uh, and to get by. Um, given the amount of the cost, it would have been a significant um, uh, cost. Um, now, it could have been spread out ar across all of the smaller streamers that are streaming for fun, but it's not clear that they would have paid um, uh, much. So we felt like in the end, that would have been one of these efforts that uh, gave streamers it's just, hope. It's a futility. Um, and some streamers may have done it. Um, others would not have. Um, and we would have ended up in the same place for most streamers, but it would have been more drawn out and it would have run into this problem where some would be moving their communities, some would not be moving their communities, um, which would have actually hurt both of them. And as with all of these decisions, we weigh these things heavily um, and we think through what we think ultimately will be the right decision. 
We don't have a crystal ball, though, um, in terms of knowing how each of the options would have um, fallen out. But appreciate that thought, and it's something that we definitely did look at. Um, Twitch, will Korean streamer and viewer accounts be preserved in case the future allows the return? Thanks for the question. Um, that is one thing that we need to determine what we're allowed to do um, uh, in terms of um, uh, with the regulators in terms of privacy. Um, we will certainly allow you to indicate that you'd like to keep your account. The question is, is it something that you opt in and say, please, I want to keep my account or that where you opt out and by default we keep your account, but if you want us to delete it, we delete it. And that's something we need, still need to determine in terms of the privacy regulations in Korea and our ability to retain the information. But at a minimum, you would have the ability to say, no, please keep my account active. Um, that both would allow you access to your account if um, uh, things change. And also when you're outside of Korea, it would provide access to your account. So we very much would like that. Um, in terms of any Korean streamers, um, if for any reason anything would uh, would change, um, or if you would move from Korea where now you're living somewhere else, we would transition your status. Um, okay. Uh, we're eventually going to need to offboard you from partner and affiliate in terms of our ability to pay you because of this, um, the processing. Um, and right now, all of our payment vehicles are in Korea. But um, so, so if you, if for any reason, you then if you get paid in America, if you live in America, you get paid in America, Korea, we then you'd be okay. Status, so you don't have to re-earn that status. From Mushroom Forty Niners, what about U.S. military uh, affiliated American citizens? It's a good question, Mushroom Forty Niners. Um, I don't know about the details there. I don't know how the bases operate um, in terms of the IP addresses, but it's something we can look into. I'm an American living in Korea, but my money goes to an American account. Can I still um, uh, monetize? So uh, Becky B plays, um, if in your account, Korea, if your country of residence is outside of Korea, then this will not affect. Yeah. Your okay. So this, this, this goes back course, to what I was just saying. Um, if you, you if you live that, outside of America, outside of Korea, or sorry, outside um, of Korea, you, you live in America, hypothetically, to purchase um, uh, on February 27th. Uh, purchase any bits. Um, you can also technically forward, stream said, to like an IRL toolkit or something. Mean in terms of streaming, um, that's something still to be determined. As I said, if you're yeah, true, that would mean you have to pay taxes uh, outside IRL of Korea. Streaming, true, cloud Kirkland. OBS services um, that come to Twitch, those come from outside Korea. So the our, the key thing is what we're going to think about is what we're doing with respect to streams that we see coming from Korea. Did you consider raising the cost of monthly subscriptions either globally or in Korea to offset this? We did. Uh, we wouldn't do it globally because again, that creates the same problem. Um, yeah, that's what you said uh, earlier, and it wouldn't it wouldn't really solve it. But we did consider raising them in Korea, and again, given the cost delta, um, if this was a small delta then we would have just kept going as we were today. But the cost delta was fairly significant. So any of the other changes we would have had to make would have been fairly significant and we wouldn't have felt like they would have succeeded um, in terms of being able to maintain Twitch. Uh, it would have just dragged things out. And in the end, we were looking for a solution that we felt was a sustainable solution so we could continue to service the Korean community. People in Korea don't have access to VODs, do they? Um, right now, we had to adjust our VOD um, policy in Korea um, because of the regulations. So basically, Korea, if you so live in Korea, we've already done that. If you um, basically move and to by America, the way, the impact. Um, uh, if you can, um, you would have to get a visa. You'd have to get paid in America. You'd have to pay taxes in America. It would be sometimes. You'd have to do. You'd, you'd be an American. Right? You're getting paid as an American. Date with respect. Um, to, um, the financial you could still uh, technically stream in uh, korea i'm picking out some are you the owner of if no, I'm you not. are streaming um, to like CEO, a uh, um, like a cloud for service which, like irl toolkit um, or something to buy amazon that so you're um, streaming to the cloud you're yeah, streaming to an rtmp LCK, server buoy, that's one of these questions that i think that goes off to, to um, um like let's um, i mean it'll be on like a twitch server in california or new york or something like that they operate so that would work what's allowed and what would be allowed with the regulations but obviously we would like to keep um, that's important content. That's you never get a work visa that way. Yeah. Well, no. What I'm saying is like th this is the only way that it would work of that sort that comes out of Korea. So um, my hope and expectation is we can find a solution because uh, the, the intent is not to impact um, that content. Uh, it's Jake and Bate here. 
if Jake, I see somebody answering, I think one of Jake and Bake's questions, um, that um, if you're going through a cloud OBS, um, then that is not coming from Korea. Uh, and so in terms of you, if you're traveling in Korea, yeah, that's, that's what I was just talking you about. You should be able to, you should be able to continue really that because we do think Korea is a wonderful country. Lots of IRL streamers like to go to Korea. We'd like to continue people to be able to visit Korea, highlight Korea. Um, I guess, it's, as I've said, it's the center, uh, uh, it's a center of gaming and esports. And so we expect people will continue to be engaging in and going through Korea. Oh, this what sucks. about Starlink? Um, Starlink is an um, uh, end user <laughs> option that is separate. Um, I do not know the prevalence of Starlink in Korea, um, uh, but people uh, have no right idea what that's like how the world works, case, man. Um, in terms of its adoption, people <laughs> have literal like yeah. Do will our streamers still be able to stream on Twitch after the twenty seventh? Um, we haven't announced when and what we would do after the twenty seventh for those people that are still trying to stream. Um, but uh, that'll be something that we are um, determining what will be allowed with respect to the regulations. From uh, Birkin Games, it's really sad. As far as I understand, there's nothing you can do, but instead of shutting down, I wish you could continue to be in Korea, even if the viewing experience was lower. This is sort of the thing we're trying to understand because we know that there are lots of creators outside of Korea that Korean um, residents would like to view, um, uh, which is separate from our Korean creators. Um, uh, and at least in other countries where we don't have, we don't operate. Yeah, exactly. So they, it's like those um, kinds of questions. We are not required to block access to that for people that are still trying to access um, the Koreans in the rest of the world. There are, there are the streamers in the rest of the world. There are other countries that we do not have uh, like monetization set up where we do not operate. Um, so what will happen then will depend in part upon what um, is allowed with respect to regulations. And that's something that we still need to determine. But I, I share your feeling, um, uh, Burke and CNGC. Any progress on AV1? We'll be talking about that in the future, but I don't think right now is the time to talk about AV1. Um, but dude, it doesn't uh, solve people, this problem. Dude, people, um, people, they're so like, why? Like, it's not even relevant. Any looking into teaming up with streaming services still active um, um, in Korea, make things smoother for um, users like transferring follow subscriptions and stuff. We definitely are going to see what we can do. The challenge with follows and subscriptions and that transformation is it requires the user's consent and the streamer's consent. And so that becomes difficult because the user, from a privacy perspective, we can't transfer information about the user that is subscribing to a particular streamer unless that user agrees. So it's unlikely we would be able to just transfer follows. And I think the best way is going to be for streamers to be streaming and saying, follow me now, subscribe to me, follow me now, subscribe to me. Um, okay, you know what about this? I actually I actually halfway agree with you. Travel the world. Because you're right. People Korea. do have to ask questions um, to learn. You're right. Uh, yes. But also is, people asking um, about like XQC uh, or AV1, like they, things that don't even make any sense. Obviously, I guess there's like question you, mark um, or like uh, Starlink. Like, like they're not listening. That's you, that's that's what I'm uh, laughing at. But you are right. Uh, your ability to stream. People got to ask questions to, Korea, to learn. You're right. Um, exactly how uh, uh, we can do this again. Uh, that depends upon what uh, the Korean regulations allow. So I'm sorry I can't give you a definitive answer there, um, but it is because we want to support that need um, that we are not, um, uh, we are, we're leaving open the details of what we need to do um, with respect to that. Did he mention IRL streamers traveling to Korea? Yep, we covered that. What if people paid for a year sub to Korean streamers? Does streamer keep the cash or viewers get a refund at Twitch? Um, the viewer can request a refund. Um, so we're going to go through notifying viewers and viewers can request a refund. Um, uh, and uh, we encourage viewers to continue supporting their streamers as they transition. And we will work to try and make it as smooth as possible. I don't want to say I'm surprised because I'm kind of not. Um, uh, but it's like I have like had, a, and so I'm really happy if, that they're, uh, they're streamers wanting to be supportive of, of transitioning um, people's to audiences residency. to other platforms if they need to still be able to stream you know? from Korea where the IP blockage blocked the chance to have any local streams without third party cloud services. Um, that depends upon what the um, uh, regulations allow us to do. Um, I think there is a reasonable chance that we will need to do IP blocking. Um, if it's coming from a Korean IP. 
but that's something that we won't um, uh, we won't have the final say on. We need to work with the regulators there. Can Korean streamers still use third-party monetization uh, tools on Twitch to make a profit? They are still able to use third-party monetization tools. A number have talked about what about Starlink and just, you know, Starlink is a way that a user can get um, access. And in fact, it would not use, they, like if we're streaming from outside of Korea, um, then we would deliver to Starlink outside of Korea. And in fact, we would not have the network usage fees. That wouldn't solve the problem for us just to make everyone get Starlink. I'm not even familiar with the um, uh, what the status of Starlink is in Korea right now. Yeah, for Bama Burn, I'd girl, um, uh, I think um, uh, you know, I'm a small streamer here in the US. I'll be visiting Korea and want to share my travel experience with my community. Will this affect my ability? Um, uh, it, it, again, we don't know what will be happening um, after the 27th in terms of a Korean IP. Um, but um, if you use a cloud OBS, which um, is commonly used, then you should still be able to share with your community uh, using the cloud. I, I feel like I feel like you're getting a lot of repeat questions at this point. I, I don't want to stop watching this because this, right. this is something that's so with like that. I, I know there are a lot of other questions there. Yeah, I, in terms of a if you if you have a U.S. residency since being stationed here in Korea, will a VPN work? I won't go into the details of in general. That is, is you are operating a VPN. Um, if you have a residency elsewhere, then uh, that also uh, may be an option for you. Yeah, in fact, what somebody said this, if everyone this transition will be yeah, challenging. Yeah, I mean it's so it's I, I it's like a net neutrality thing. This affects Korean every streamers as much as you can now. This affects everybody. Like uh, I, I don't even know if they can go to that YouTube. That would be wonderful. I'd really appreciate that. Um as that will ease the transition. Will this affect all Twitch Korea? I'm not sure. I think we've answered that. I know there will continue to be questions. I'll continue to try and provide clarity. Um uh we very much, I want to go ahead and wrap up by saying, I think you can see this was not a decision we wanted to make. Um, even as we made the decision, we reconsidered it repeatedly. I mean, realistically, um, the only- We had a head of steam going to implement it to see if there were other options we could pursue. I want to highlight the reason we didn't pursue them because we felt like that in the end would actually be a disservice to the Korean streamers because we felt like it would lead them to believe that this would be viable long-term and if we did not think that was a long-term viable, it would have just led to a slow um, uh, reduction in the Twitch experience. And it would have slowly moved people over, which would have hurt our streamers and our viewers. And we felt like making a clean announcement as opposed to just um, uh, um, slowly making it that Korea was not viable was the better decision. Um, I want to thank all the Korean streamers again um, uh, and their communities. This is a very difficult um, decision, mm. sad day. We're very sorry to have to do this, and we want to do all we can to support you um, as you try to move your communities over to other services. So thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Damn. Yeah, that uh, that sucks. Um I mean, I think I think the big thing that 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 we can see here, uh, obviously, like from my perspective, it's it's one of those things that's like um, uh, we 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 heard about like the Twitch perspective of things, right? But for me too, it's like um, I, have, I have a lot of friends, right, that I've made over the years from from Korea. So uh, obviously, I'm gonna be be like this is this sucks, right? Like it's like I've I've close friends that I've made throughout the years, all that stuff. So I, I really hope that like they're to get their stuff figured out. It's very clear that this was like an omega tough decision that they had to make at Twitch. And it's not really on, it doesn't really seem like it's on them at all. It's it's the Korean laws and, and the fact that, uh, I, I wish I had a better understanding of exactly how net neutrality worked. I mean, kudos to them for going live like right after the answer and being like, yo, we're just gonna talk about it and do a little bit of Q and A. But I mean, this kind of stuff, yeah, it can, it can happen anywhere, you're right. Um, it can it can literally happen anywhere and it's it's happening in Korea. So it looks like the solution right now is to move to another platform like uh, Africa TV or maybe YouTube. People, they said YouTube, but honestly, like if Netflix is having these problems, if Twitch is having these problems, I, I don't know, maybe YouTube just bites the bullet and eats the cost. Realistically, the only place where you'd have any sort of like, uh, I mean, I, I would probably if I was if I was a Korean streamer, I would probably go YouTube. I would I would probably go YouTube, especially if I had a Western audience. I would really go in that direction. But 
the only one with real 100% certainty long term, or I say 100%, the one with the highest amount of certainty long term would be Africa TV. And uh, Africa TV is not really, um, it's not that big of a website in the grand scheme of things, but it's really popular in Korea. That's really like your only two options because then everything else that's not, is there any other streaming service in Korea that I don't know about? No, Kick is not in Korea, like a Korean streaming service. There are two local ones on YouTube. So there's Africa TV and what's the other one? Naver, Naver V Live. I mean, here's the thing. It's like people, people from outside companies from outside of Korea can do this. They can, they, they can uh, bite the bullet on it, but it's, it's just something that doesn't really make any sense. Right. And that's, that's kind of the point that they hit on, on Twitch. So it's not to say that like uh, somebody like kick wouldn't do that. I, I just think that if, if I'm a Korean streamer, I, I, I don't know. Knowing that that's the case for them. I, I wouldn't, I, I don't know what I would do. I mean, that, that seems it's it's a, that's very scary. Ten times the cost is crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe 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 kick is just all good and it's all fine. But um, I, I feel like if if that was me, I would probably go YouTube. That YouTube seems like the wise decision there. Um, where it's like the it's the mix of uh, it's kind of the apex of like risk because they're so big and they have so much. I mean, I I think if anybody can do it, it's YouTube. Um, so that's, that's just kind of the apex of, of risk versus, yeah, that hurts. That's rough, man. I, I'm, I, I feel so bad, man. I, I really, really do. I really, really do. Now, the other solution would be if you can apply for a visa and you can, if, if you're willing to, if you want to move out of Korea, I mean, let's say you move to America or something and you pay American taxes and you, you are an American, then that's the other solution. The other solution is you do that, uh, you'd be fine. You you transfer everything over. Technically, even if that was the case, I I don't think you can. I don't think you can like get a. I, I don't know. I don't know how the laws work. If you can like get a visa or whatever, let's say you want to move, like you want to live in Korea, but you want to have like a visa and everything for America. If you can stay in Korea, I have no idea how the laws work. But uh, if you can stay in Korea, stream stream to a cloud server, stream to an RTMP cloud server. Uh, the OBS is actually run out of a server in Los Angeles, New York, Texas, something like that. But I, I don't think that would even work. Now, I, yeah, I don't know how Ginny's situation works. Ginny d did get a house in Texas. Ginny does own a house in Texas. So I, I don't know. Ginny might be okay. Here's some good news. If you're a streamer in Korea and use our service, your stream enters Twitch's service in the USA regardless of where you actually are. As such, you will be able to use our service to stream to Twitch, even if Twitch blocks going live directly from Korea. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was just talking about. So that that is a that is that but that that this doesn't really work for people being able to like actually stream work in Korea. You know what I mean? So no chat. This does not mean you can you can go marry your f favorite Korean streamer. Okay, that, like uh, come on. This does not mean your 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 favorite Korean streamer all of a sudden wants to get married to you. Okay, um, except for me, in my case, I will be marrying Charming Joe. And that, but for you guys, uh, no, yeah, that's not gonna be the case. Yeah. <laughs> she says she loved me. No, she said, I love you guys. She was talking about me specifically on an individual level. No. <laughs> oh man, dude, this is uh, this is a hard one. Dan mentioned something that was, uh, I, I think it was wise. He talked about like people splitting up and, and changing platforms and uh, when the viewers kind of get stuck in limbo and they're like, do we go here? Do we go there? Um, it's very hard because some streamers have like more of a Western community and some some Korean streamers have more of a uh, like a Korean community. Like take a look at someone like Ginny, for example. Ginny has a lot of Western viewers. She has a lot of European viewers. She has a lot of American viewers. She, she has a lot of viewers from from just around the globe, right? Her situation might be particularly weird. Actually, a lot of the Korean IRL streamers are like that, to be honest. Like, uh, yeah, like Hachu or, or I, I just use Ginny as an example, right? But but a lot of them are actually like that. So so it is kind of weird. Um, I think I think the point of wisdom that Dan had was the viewers getting stuck in limbo and people not all moving together, right? Because if you have a if you have some degree of a shared community and then it's like, okay, all the Korean streamers are on Africa TV. Right, if all the if all the Korean streamers are on Africa TV, it helps the transition a lot. If all the Korean streamers go to YouTube, it helps the transition a lot. 
XBC is another really good example of somebody who has like a, a, a heavy Western community. There's a bunch of them, right? Like a lot of the, a lot of the guys that we know have like heavy Western communities. I think what would be wise for those people is probably YouTube over Africa TV because I think going to Africa TV could be off-putting or it's just hard to get into if you maybe if you're if you're not Korean, it would probably be hard to get into watching streams on Africa TV. It's it's spelled Africa. Yeah, it's spelled Africa. I mean, Kick is going to have the same problems Twitch has with this. I have gone through uh, an involuntary platform change. Some of you guys know that. A lot of you guys don't know that. It's been so many years. But but I got banned on YouTube. I started streaming on YouTube. I got banned, and then I came to Twitch, right? And um, I was uh, I was doing well on YouTube. The, the last couple of weeks, I mean, I was hitting like up to up to like 500, 600 viewers at the time, which this was in 2017. Like, that's pretty solid especially on YouTube. I ended up getting a ban and then I moved to Twitch. And I remember I went from, I think I, I had literally just hit six, I was w looking at it and I just hit 600 viewers. I just hit 600 viewers and I was climbing. I was live for like an hour and, uh, or maybe I was live for like 30 minutes. I don't know. I was live for a short amount of time. Climbing, hit 600 viewers, got banned. Whenever I went and I started streaming on Twitch, I went from this like five, 600 number that I had a couple weeks prior to getting like 20, 30 viewers on Twitch which is actually like, that's as many viewers as I had when I first started streaming. My first ever stream, I had 50 viewers. And then my second stream, I had 30, and then I just slowly kind of grew from there, 30-ish, uh, right? So I basically restarted from from uh, where I was on that first day. So it's a lot for first, well, I made YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah, I, I made I made Paladin YouTube videos and stuff, so people had kind of gotten to, to know who I was. So yeah, I mean, that is a lot for first stream. But yeah, so <laughs> YouTube S fan was wild, man. No, I got banned because I was streaming while private servers. That's basically what happened to me. So I, I've gone through that platform change. It is very, very scary, and it's very, very hard. It is not easy to change platforms. Going from YouTube to Twitch was something that, for me, uh, was pretty difficult. Now, at that time, there's, there's a few key differences. One, it was only myself. Two, I couldn't stream the game I was streaming anymore, so my content had to change. There was honestly, I mean, another difference is that there's, there's less money involved in streaming in 2017 than there is now. Uh, which is either good or bad. Good from the perspective of uh, there's less... <laughs> Shut up, guys. Uh, there's... It, it was good from the perspective of, like... Well, let's start with the bad. It was bad from the perspective of, like... <sighs> because there was less money involved, it was, it was a little bit scarier because I hadn't made... I, I made $10,000, like, my first year streaming. You know, I, like, that was, like, my... Like, I made, like, 10K. Uh, in, in one year of streaming, ish. Like, it was, I don't remember the exact number. So because I, I uh, because I did not have, uh, I wasn't making a lot of money streaming, it was like, okay, well, like, I'm banned. And I was kind of doing it on the side while I was getting ready to go, like, coach football. So I was like, okay, I'm still going to keep trying to do this because, like, I kind of, I got a hit. I got, like, I'm fishing and I got, I got a bite, right? So I got to keep going. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to lose a, a massive amount of income. Uh, now, the bad part of it is, is that I don't have a bunch of capital like saved up. And, and uh, I'm like, OK, like if something happens, like I have a backup plan because I didn't actually I was like minus like a hundred something thousand dollars at the point. Like, I mean, I was I was in the red red. So how long were your streams back then? I used to stream like four or five hours, two to three times a week. Yeah. And I would make YouTube videos and stuff like that. So um, my point being, I'm just trying to apply my own personal experience to this. Um, I, I know how difficult it is and how hard it is to try and get people to move from one platform to another and all the different like difficulties that come with, comes with that. The good part of this is it is a lot of people at once. And because it's a lot of people at once, it is, it is news. People are going to know about it. People are going to hear about it. Inevitably, you're not going to have a hundred percent conversion. It is just not going to work that way. Right. That's, that's just the reality of it. But thankfully, because it is not just you and it's a bunch of other streamers, People like it's like the idea of like uh, essentially has a similar effect to that of like a collective bargaining situation where you want to have a bunch of streamers move to, to platform A, B or C at the same time, which uh, keeps their ecosystem of viewers on that platform because they're like, well, my streamer is already here. I might as well just or like three of my streamers are here so I can watch streamer A, B, C and stay on the platform. That's kind of uh, that's one of the pros. As much as this sucks, that is kind of like a, a positive. In that it's not, you're not alone. And because you're not alone, 
Um, I, I think that you're going to have a lot of support from the community as well. Right. I, I, I think that people are going to go and they're going to follow. And, and I would encourage people to do that. Like it's, it's hard. It is, it is very hard to regrow. I had a lot of help, you know, I had to regrow and then people knew me from who I was in the private server community. You know, it's like, oh, it's S fan. It's the, it's the rep paladin memer, yeah, all kinds true. of stuff. Right. And uh, I got a lot of shout outs from Soda and from Asmin and, and all these guys. Right. And, and, and I rebuilt up to whatever. Right. Cause these guys got to know me. So, so that helped me a lot. It take people need help, man. People need help. Like this is a, this is not going to be something that's easy. So like, that's the biggest thing I could do is encourage that whenever these guys move platforms, whatever, wherever they move, if they move, right. If they don't come up with their other own solution to, to make sure to go and follow them, you know? And that's just, yeah, this is, this is the truth. So props to Dan Clancy for uh, how he's handling this instead of being big Corpa. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, the, the whole thing sucks. I, I like I like Dan a lot. Uh, I, I like Dan a lot. But, um, yeah, I like Dan a lot. And uh, I, I think he's handling the situation as best as he can. It's rough. It's rough. It just, it's just, it always, it's always going to be bad. It's always going to feel bad whenever something like this happens. And you hope that it never happens, right? But but it did. And it is. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. What about XQC? Yeah, exactly. There, I mean, it's. I think it takes balls to, to go live and to be like, hey, let's talk about this. This is exactly what's going on. Uh, it sucks. Yeah, there's not. There's nothing that you can really do. Like you're you're kind of you're, you're kind of stuck. You don't really have an option. Yeah, we all know at the end of the day, this whole thing is 80% Miska's fault. So it's like, what, like, what are you gonna do?